Ahead, Google One, Apple Zero, and Windmill to put Don Quixote to shame for charity later in the show. Welcome to Free Times Square this Thursday from Reuters World Headquarters in New York. The Google Maps app is back on the iPhone. The search giant announcing the news in a blog post. The director of Google Maps for mobile writing Quote, it's designed from the ground up to be the comprehensive and comprehensiveness and accuracy of Google Maps with an interface that makes finding what you're looking for faster and easier. The Apple Maps app received scathing reviews and a mountain of complaints for misplacing locations. Here it has a pin indicating Taipei is in the Pacific Ocean. CEO Tim Cook apologized for its performance, which led to the departure of an Apple executive. Shares of Apple closed Wednesday at 5.39 and are now down at about 5.35. A gift for Best Buy shareholders could be on the way from our power player of the day, its founder Richard Scholes. The Minneapolis Star Tribune reporting the former executive is expected to make at least a $5 billion offer for the chain. Scholes and Best Buy declined to comment on the story. Shares of the struggling electronics retailer surging in early trading. Best Buy is up and jobless claims are down. Our daily digit, 343,000. The figure for the most recent week. That's nearly 30,000 lower than the prior week and below forecast. The four-week moving average also down along with continuing claims. Positive news from Europe as well as the EU agrees to a banking deal. Our Angeline Ong joins us from London. Angeline, what does this set out to do and what does it mean? Lisa, it basically sets up a structure in which bank surveillance in the Eurozone will work. It's important, Lisa, because not only does it represent the first concrete step the bloc's taking together to solve its problems, but it also means we know now who's in the party and which banks are involved. But there's no time to relax. The next stages of banking union include creating a so-called resolution fund for allowing troubled banks to fail and coordinating deposit guarantees to protect savers. Now, the ECB starts its new watchdog duties in March 2014. Team. What does this mean for the U.S.? Well, not a lot in the short term, but in the long term, a European banking system, of course, well, if it's stronger, it'll be good for everyone, including the U.S. Back to you. Very true. Thanks, Angeline. And while we're speaking of things overseas, the Hollywood Foreign Press announced their Golden Globe nominations this morning. Leading the pack, the ultimate American, Abe Lincoln, as Steven Spielberg's Lincoln earned seven nods, including Best Drama, Best Director for Steven Spielberg, and Best Actor in a Drama for Daniel Day-Lewis. Voters were feeling political this season, with the Iran hostage drama Argo, directed by and starring Ben Affleck, nominated for Best Drama, along with Zero Dark Thirty about the hunt for Osama bin Laden. And finally, rockers and comedians took to the stage last night at Madison Square Garden for the 12-12-12 concert, for Hurricane Sandy relief. A nearly bare-chested Roger Daltrey flexed his pecs alongside bandmate Pete Townsend as The Who were among those who played to nearly two billion people worldwide through television feeds, radio and online streaming. Speaking of aging rockers, Bruce Springsteen also headlined along with Billy Joel. Bridging the gap between old and new-ish, Paul McCartney jammed his front man for the remaining members of Nirvana. Wow, pretty cool. That is the latest from Free Times Square this Wednesday. You can follow us on Twitter, at Reuters Insider, and check out our Reuters YouTube channel, at Reuters.com slash Reuters TV. I'm Lisa Bernhard. This is Reuters.